Mr. Bannister, I'm Dr. Smith. How do you do? Very good to meet you, sir. Good to see you as well. Uh, <coughs> I've been told by your doctor that he would like to have uh, uh, me do a little test of your memory and some of your other mental processes and to check for depression. There's apparently a little concern. Is that uh, your understanding, too? I understand that. Okay. Yes. And I have it down here. Your, your full name is... Uh, Deward Bannister. Right. They call you Duke, though. Yeah, they call me Duke. Okay. And I've written down here that you're alert. Now, uh, my records show you're 97. Right. Okay. And uh, you have a high school diploma? Uh, no, I don't have. Okay. You, how, how? I didn't finish. Uh, I almost finished, but I just didn't, didn't get the diploma. Okay. So just short of a high school diploma. Right. All right. Well, here, here's the test. Now, understand that... This test has some items that are very easy and some that are very hard. Mm -hmm. And so nobody gets a perfect score. Don't get upset if you don't know one of the answers okay. or something that well. Actually, some of the things we're going to do here are kind of fun. What day of the week is it today? Uh, Thursday. It is. And what year is it? Uh, 11. Oh, 11. 2011. Yes, it is. And what state do we live in? Texas. Ah, the great state of Texas. Okay. Now, I'm going to have you try and re remember, memorize, a series of five words, five things. Uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get them all memorized, but after you've got them memorized, we're going to go do something else to give you a chance to forget. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back and I'll ask you to remember them again. Okay. okay. So try very hard to get them memorized. Okay. First, I'm going to say them one at a time, and you say them back to me. Apple. Apple. Pen. Pen. Tie. Tie. House. House. Car. Car. Now, let me say the whole batch, and then you say it after me. Apple. Pen. Tie. House. Car. Apple. Pen. Tie. Ca house. Car. Good job. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the something else. You have $100. And you go to the store and buy a dozen apples for $3 and a tricycle for $20. How much money did you spend? Uh, $23. Good, good. And how much money would you have left? Uh, $72. 72 Okay. Now, this next one is a time test. I want to see how many different animals you can think of in one minute. Go. Uh, rabbit. Squirrel, dog, cat, horse, uh, mule, uh, elephant, zebra, cow, calf, goat, sheep. Uh, that crop. <laughs> yeah, keep going. You're doing good. Uh, monkey, ape. Yeah. Yes. Snake. Uh-huh. Uh, armadillo. Okay. Listen, <laughs> okay. We, we haven't got into a minute yet, and you've got a, the maximum score, so you don't need to, to, to mention any more. That's pretty good. Okay. What were those five words I wanted you to remember? I'm not too Okay. Take your time. I can't remember the first one. Do you remember any of them? Yeah, I remember the house. There's one, yeah. Well, I can't think of Okay. Now, one of the words was a type of fruit. Apple. Yeah, that's what it was. One of them was uh, something you write with. Pencil? Pen? It was a pen, yeah. yeah. Okay. One of them was something a fellow wears to church. And, on, uh, that? Yeah, it was a necktie. And one of them was a, a, a kind of transportation. Car. A car. So when I give you clues, you got more of them, didn't you? Yeah. Actually, though, the test is for uh, spontaneous Maybe. memory, though, so let's put down a one on that. But we'll remember that with clues, you did better. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to give you a series of numbers. And I want you to try to say them back to me, but say them backwards of the way I did it. Okay. 
So if I say 2 4, you'd say 4 2. Right. Okay? 8 7. 7 6. Uh, 8 7? Yeah. 7 8. Good. 6 4 9. Uh, 9 4 6. Good. 8 5 3 7. 8 5 3 7. 7 3 5 8. Well done. Well done. Okay. Now, this on this form, they've got a little tiny circle, but I'm going to turn this page over. I always think this makes it easier to see, and I'm going to give you the pen, sir. I want you to make this circle into a clock, put in all the numbers, and then make the hands say 10 minutes to 11. There you go. All right. Hang on to that pen. You see these three objects right here? Yes, sir. Put an X inside the triangle. Now, which one of those three shapes is the largest? This one. Sure. That one right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the last item on this test. I'm going to tell you a story. Please listen carefully because afterwards I'm going to ask you some questions about it. <clears throat> Jill was a very successful stockbroker. She made a lot of money in the stock market. She then met Jack, a devastatingly handsome man. She married him and they had three children. They lived in Chicago. She then stopped work and stayed at home to bring up her children. When they were teenagers, she went back to work. She and Jack lived happily ever after. What was the female's name? Jill. It was. What work did she do? Well, maybe you saying. <laughs> we got that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. When did she go back to work? Uh, when the teenagers. Were... When the kids were growing up. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's right. And what state did she live in? About that. Okay. All right. You did pretty good here, though. Let's move on to the depression test. Okay. Now, with this test, we can talk some more about the details later. It's very important that what you do for me right now is just answer with a yes or no. Okay. Okay? Don't embellish. Don't tell me anything else about it. If it's hard to make a yes or, yes or no answer, just take your best shot. Okay. Try to get it as close as you can to a yes or no. Are you basically satisfied with your life? Yes. Have you dropped out of many of your activities and interests? No. Do you feel like your life is empty? No. Do you often get bored? No. Are you in good spirits most of the time? Yes, sir. Are you afraid that something bad is going to happen to you? No. Do you feel happy most of the time? Yes. Do you often feel helpless? No. Do you prefer to stay at home rather than going out and doing new things? No. Right. You, you tell me which one you, you the yes? Do you uh, prefer to stay at home rather than going out and doing new things? Uh, yes. Yes. Kind of a homebody, huh? Right. Do you feel you have more problems with memory than most people do? Uh, no. Do you think it's wonderful to be alive? Yes. Do you feel pretty worthless the way you are right now? No. Do you feel full of energy? Yes. Do you feel that your situation is hopeless? No. And do you think that most people are better off than you are? No. All right. Well, you only had one item that scored in the direction of depression, and that's not unusual. Mm -hmm. And probably it's just because you are a homebody. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't signify anything, and there's really no evidence that you have any depression put my name on here, and I'll put today's date, and I'm going to put my assessment that there is no evidence.
evidence for depression. Now on the cognitive exam, the memory exam, you remember that you had some trouble with yeah. the, the words. Yeah. You did very, very well on all of the other things, uh, things that take brain power, like mm -hmm. coming up with the animals. Mm -hmm. You did a great job with the saying the numbers backwards. You did a great job. You drew me, drew me a good clock. Uh, you got the numbers right. Then you had a little trouble with memory in the story. Yeah. So you scored a 20, and uh, with less than a high school education, that still falls right at the bottom end of normal. Mm -hmm. Now, you're one point off of, and I think with this kind of memory issue, you're one point off of what we call minimum cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. So it's still normal, but what I would recommend is that we redo this test in about six months. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Ms. Jeffrey, I'm Dr. Smith. I'm glad to meet you. How to do. Uh, your doctor has asked me to run a couple of uh, little tests. One is to check on memory and some other uh, brain power uh, mm -hmm. uh, things. And the other one is uh, uh, for depression. All right. There's been a concern, I guess, on his part, and he would like us to check on this. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to write down that you're alert. You're clearly alert. Okay. And uh, how many years young are you? How many years old am I? Yeah. 85. 85 <laughs> this year, okay. How far did you go in school? I finished the university. Oh. I have a BFA. College, college grad, huh? Yes. It's age 75 I graduated <laughs> out of UTSA. My goodness. <laughs> now, you're obviously able to hear me okay. Yes. And is your eyesight all right? Uh, because I have two hearing aids on. Well, that works. <laughs> my eyesight's okay with my glasses. Okay. Yes. And uh, both your arms work. You're, you're yes. not going to have trouble writing for me. No. Okay. You have that stroke or anything. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, this test of memory and, and other cognitive processes goes from very easy to very hard. It's, it's unusual for people to get it all right. So if you miss something, don't be concerned. Okay. Some of the things in here are actually kind of fun. I think we'll enjoy ourselves. Okay. What day of the week is it today? <laughs> this is Thursday. It is. It's 21st. Thursday. Okay. okay. What, what year is it? Uh, it's 2011. It is. What state do we live in? Texas. Well, see, now there's your first mistake. It's the great state of Texas. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, here's, here's the first one that's hard, and it's a, it's a memory one. I'm going to give you uh, five words, five objects. We're going to take as long as it takes to memorize them. That doesn't count. But after you've got them memorized, we're going to do something else to give you a chance to forget. Yeah. And then I'll come back and ask them again mm -hmm. for you to remember. So try very hard to get them memorized. Okay. First, let me say them one word at a time, and you just say it after me. Apple. Apple. Pen. 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 Mm -hmm. Tie. Tie. House. House. Car. Car. Okay. Apple. Pen. Tie. House. Car. Well, there, you jumped ahead of me. I was going to say them all as a match for you, but you got it. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the something else. This is, are you good at mathematics? Are you, are you good at mathematics? Yeah, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> All right, let's try this. You have $100, and you go to the store and buy a dozen apples for $3 and a tricycle for $20. Mm -hmm. How much money did you spend? $23. Good. How much money would you have left? I would have well, $77. Good. You got it right. All right, I've got my watch right here. This one is going to be timed. How many different animals can you think of in one minute? Go. Cat, dog, cow, sheep, monkey, lion, tiger, elephant, uh, worms, <laughs> um, fish. 
seconds. Inside the triangle. Tell me which one of those shapes is the largest. The square. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. Ah. <laughs> All right. Now here's the last one on this test. Mm -hmm. This gets kind of hard. I'm going to give. I'm going to tell you a story. Please listen, listen carefully because after I'm done, I'm going to ask you questions about it. Jill was a very successful stockbroker. She made a lot of money in the stock market. She then met Jack, a devastatingly handsome man. She married him and they had three children. They lived in Chicago. She then stopped work and stayed at home to bring up her children. When they were teenagers, she went back to work. She and Jack lived happily ever after. What was the female's name? Jill. What work did she do? She was a stockbroker. You bet. When did she go back to work? After the children were grown up. Okay. And what state did she live in? Um, <laughs> in Chicago, Illinois. Illinois, good job. Okay, a lot of people missed that one. But you got it. All right, you get full points here. Mm. No problems with memory. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I've been part of the Women's Health Initiative oh. for about 15 years, oh, yes. and part of that was memory. Mm -hmm. that was exactly. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on to the depression test. Okay. I hear that there might be some problems here, so uh, just answer as, as um, honestly as you can. Yeah, all right. uh, also, it's very important, we could talk about details for talk about this in, in more um, uh, ways afterwards, mm -hmm. but I want, what I want you to do is give me yes or no answers. All right. Okay. If it's hard to choose between yes or no, just do your best and choose one or the other. Okay. okay. Are you basically satisfied with your life? Yes. Have you dropped out of many of your activities and interests? Yes. Okay. Do you feel like your life is empty? My foot. Do you feel like your life is empty? No. Do you often get bored? No. Are you in good spirits most of the time? Yes. Seem to be. 
Are you afraid that something bad is going to happen to you? No. Do you feel happy most of the time? Yes. Do you often feel helpless? No. Do you prefer to stay at home rather than going out and doing new things? No. Do you feel you have more problems with memory than most people do? No. Do you think it's wonderful to be alive? Of course. Yes. Okay. Do you feel pretty worthless the way you are right now? No. Do you feel full of energy? Yes. Do you feel like your situation is hopeless? No. And do you think that most people are better off than you are? No. <laughs> okay. Well, you only had one answer that kind of fell into the um, direction of depression, dropping out of activities and interests. Is that because of physical problems? That's because my husband died. Ah, okay. And I, I'm an artist. And uh, we were writing a book for six and a half years. We did get it finished, and uh, I did a lot of the work on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, I did a lot of painting and portraits and all kinds of things. And during that time, I didn't have time to paint at all. Oh, I see. And now I'm back again. I did a commission for a portrait recently. Oh, my goodness. So I'm, I'm coming back, but that has been frustrating. <laughs> When did he pass away? Uh, July 16th, last summer. Okay, so it's less than a year. Yes. Yeah, that first year is the hardest. He was a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were missionaries in Korea for 30 years. Oh, my goodness. And uh, he did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I've enjoyed uh, meeting you, and it's... it's uh, Good that I can give your doctor a very good report on both the, the cognition and the depression. Good. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so you can tell me your name again, sir. Uh, Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S. Hutchings, H-U-T-C-H-I-N-G-S. Okay. Mr. Hutchings, I'm Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. And uh, your doctor... Uh, has referred you to me. He would like me to perform a couple of tests. One of them is to check on memory and some other cognitive functions. And the other one is to uh, check for depression. Uh, he has some concerns and he would just like to check these things. I've written your name down here and I'm going to write down that you are indeed alert. You're not out of it. How many years old are you, sir? Uh, 91. 91 this year. And how far did you go in school? About nine years. Ninth grade? No. Okay. Now, this test of memory and cognition is uh, set up to be have very easy questions and very hard questions. Almost nobody gets it all right. So if you don't get something right, don't get flustered, okay? What day of the week is it today? Today is Thursday. It is. Today is Thursday. What year is it? Let's see. Year. Year. I know. Well, it's uh, 2011. Okay, it is. What state do we live in? Texas. The great state of Texas, you bet. <clears throat> the next one, next item here, is... Uh, the memory test, and it's pretty hard. I want you to memorize five different objects, five words. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you need to get it all memorized. That doesn't count. But after you get it memorized, we'll do something else to give you a chance to forget, and then I'm going to ask you to remember the words, okay? So let's see if you can get them memorized. To begin with, I want you just to repeat the words after me, the objects after me. Apple. Apple. Pen. Pen. Tie. Tie. House. House. Car. Car. Okay. Let me just break for a minute because I forgot something. I forgot to ask you, have you got pretty good eyesight? Yeah. I've got to go and see the doctor. Okay. But you're, you can basically see okay. 
and you're able to hear me all right. Yeah. That seems obvious. And you don't have any problem with either of your hands. You haven't had a stroke or anything. No. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. So you can draw, draw with a pen and, okay. So we're good. Let's do those again. Apple. Apple. Pen. Pen. Tie. Tie. House. House. Car. Car. Okay. Now let's do them all in a string. Apple, pen, tie, house, car. That's tougher, I know. Yeah. Apple, pen, tie, house, and car. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Now let's go on to the something else. You have $100.00. And you go to the store and you buy a dozen apples for $3 and a tricycle for $20. How much money did you spend? No, I don't. I, I can't keep up with it. Let me just repeat it all over again. That's okay. You have $100 and you go to the store and you buy a dozen apples for $3 and a tricycle for $20. How much money did you spend? My memory's not that good. Okay. And then you probably wouldn't be able to tell me how much you had left either. No. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Like I say, nobody gets these all, all correct. Let's move on to the next thing. This one is timed. I've got my watch right here. How many different animals can you think of in one minute? Go. Cat, dog, squirrel, monkey. Elephant, cow, horse. Good. And let's see. No, there's so many more of them that you can. Squirrel, did I say that? You had that one. Well, let's see. Chickens, ducks. Zebras. Oh, there you go. Okay, time's up. You did pretty well. You worked hard at it, but you did good. Now, what were those five objects I wanted you to remember? Apples. Mm -hmm. Chai. Yes. Car. That's one. That's about it. Give it your best. Can't, make Can't remember the other ones? Okay, you remembered apple and tie and car. One of them was something that you write with. Pen. A pen. One of them was a kind of a building. Okay, so when I give you a clue, you got them. That's actually not part of the test, but I always do it uh, because it kind of gives me another little clue. The next one I think is kind of fun. It's, it's a good challenge for the brain here. I'm going to give you a series of numbers, and I want you to say them back to me, but say them backwards of the way I did it. So if I say 2-4, you'd say 4-2. Okay? 8-7. Eight, 7-8. Seven. Seven, good. Six four nine. Nine. Six four. Okay. Eight five three seven. Three seven eight. Nine. Okay. All right. Well, they've got a little bitty circle on this paper. I always like to make it bigger. It's just easier. I'll draw a circle on the back of the paper here, and I'm going to give you the pen. Make this circle into a clock. Put in all the numbers, and then make the hands say 10 minutes to 11. Well, let's see. I can't.
can't remember right off my hand. What is a, this is either 12. Well, I guess it would be 12. Mm -hmm. You get one. Okay. You get two. You got three. You got four. It's come down here. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. And we got twelve. Now you want a certain time on there. No, I don't even remember what it was. Well, let me tell you, it was 10 minutes to 11. 10 minutes to 11. Well, there's 10 minutes. That would be here. And here. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> Let me give you back the pen. I'll cover up that circle because we already used it. Do you see these three shapes? Yeah. Put an X inside the triangle. Now, just tell me which one of those three shapes is the largest. Well, gauging, I would say that it's this one. You bet. Yep. That'd be it. <laughs> okay. Here's the last item on this test. I'm going to tell you a story. Listen carefully because afterwards I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Jill was a very successful stockbroker. She made a lot of money in the stock market. She then met Jack, a devastatingly handsome man. She married him and they had three children. They lived in Chicago. She then stopped work and stayed at home to bring up her children. When they were teenagers, she went back to work. She and Jack lived happily ever after. What was the female's name? Skips. Jumped out of your mind? Okay. What work did she do? Oh, I can't think. I can't remember. All right. Hardly any of it. <laughs> That's okay. When did she go back to work? After the children were... That's correct. That's correct. And what state did they live in? <laughs> okay. Well, her name was Jill, and she was a stockbroker. Yeah. And they, the, the paragraph said that they lived in Chicago, but Chicago is not a state, is it? It's Illinois. That's so that's a trick question. <laughs> that's a trick question. Okay, and let me score this up then. thing we're going to do is a depression test, kind of check you for signs of any depression. With this test, it's important to just answer yes or no. Later on, we can talk about the details if there's something you want to tell me about these questions, but right now I want just to be a black or white yes or no, okay? Are you basically satisfied with your life? Yes. Have you dropped out of many of your activities and interests? 
Yes. Do you feel like your life is empty? No. Do you often get bored? No. Are you in good spirits most of the time? Most of the time. Yes. Are you afraid that something bad is going to happen to you? No. Do you feel happy most of the time? <clears throat> no, but I have to put something else with it. Okay, but that was a no, and we can talk about the rest of that later. Do you often feel helpless? Once or twice. Okay. I have to say yes to one or two times. Okay. Let me repeat the question because it, it asks, do you often feel helpless? No. Okay. That's really a no answer. I thought that's what you were trying to tell me. Do you prefer to stay at home rather than going out and doing new things? I'd have to put a maybe there. It depends upon what the situation <laughs> is. If you had to choose between a yes or a no, I'll tell. I'll, I'll guess. I'll ask the question again. Do you prefer to stay at home yeah. rather than going out and doing new things? Yeah. You do. Okay. Do you feel that you have more problems with memory than most people do? No. Do you think it's wonderful to be alive? Yes. You bet. Do you feel pretty worthless the way you are right now? No. Do you feel full of energy? Well, here again, I'd have to, it just depends upon the time and when, I'd have to say no. No? Okay. Uh, do you feel like your situation is hopeless? No. And do you think that most people are better off than you are? No. Now, you wanted to tell me a little bit more about the question, do you feel happy most of the time? Well, to, to feel happy most of the time, just laughing or something like that, no. But uh, there are certain situ it depends upon what the situation is mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. So whether you want to be laughing or whether you want to be snarling or something. If I would have substituted the word satisfied for happy, do you feel satisfied most of the time? Yeah. Then you would have said yes. So when, you're, when you use the word happy, you mean like joyous and yeah. bubbly and okay. All right. That helps me to understand. Well... A couple of these items are in the direction of depression, but not enough of them to concern me that you have a problem with depression. Yeah. All right. The, the memory test, you recognize you have a little problem with the memory. That's not unusual at 91. Uh, but the other thing I notice, your clock is a perfectly good clock, but as you drew your clock, I noticed that your hand has a shake. Yeah. And your numbers are very small. You're, you just naturally write very small. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and of course, then the shakiness makes your, your um, numbers be a little shaky. What that uh, looks to me like is maybe some Parkinson's disease. Has your doctor diagnosed Parkinson's disease? No. The, um, the shakiness is called. Uh, Parkinsonian tremor or extrapyramidal tremor, and this small numbers is what we call micrographia. Well, now a lot, lot of, or most of the time, I'll put it this way: most of the time, like I'm writing a check, uh -huh. I've noticed yeah, it's too small. Actually, well, do you have a check? <laughs> you want to write me one right now? <laughs> No, Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, it just, uh, as you indicated, the letters are small. Yes. Most, most, of, most of the time, uh, 
what I'm writing now. Because what I have to do, if I get a pen or something, I have to press down on the uh, line in order to keep the hand from shaking. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that, that's that been going on for quite a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I can let, me just, uh, let me just feel your arm here. I want to do this. Okay, I feel a little cogwheel in that. We uh, we probably should ask your doctor to go through the the checklist for for Parkinson's. See if there might be a little early Parkinson's there. Well, listen, uh, I appreciate you very much coming and taking the test. Did a good job on it, and uh, with uh, with this little bit of a memory problem, I would recommend that you. Repeat this test about every six months. Uh, he did a strategic uh, construction of the clock by putting the 12, the 6, the 3, and the 9 in, and then filled in the other numbers to uh, get the numbers properly spaced around the clock. You'll see a lot of people that don't do that, don't strategize that way, start with 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they're, they're clear over to 7 or 8 by the time they get to here. And then they don't know how to correct themselves. But in his case, he strategized correctly uh, to, to get his numbers well positioned. Nevertheless, you'll notice that the numbers are written very small uh, around the edge of this clock, which has nothing to do with the clock drawing test, but gives me uh, the finding, presumptively, of micrographia. And then I wish you had been able to see his pill rolling tremor. He had a very mild, I'm exaggerating it here, it was nothing like as severe as his was, but when he put his pen to paper, that became the shaky lines. When I asked him to do the, the place the hands at 10 minutes uh, to 11, he was unable to create that, and so he didn't get those two points. What he did do was tell me then that he, when he put, made this squiggly line and this squiggly line here, and indicated to me that that meant that the clock was at 10 minutes to 11. That's obviously wrong because there aren't hands drawn to the center of the clock, but also it's not 10 minutes to 11. It points to 15 minutes to uh, 11. On all three of our patients here, I did some motivational things. I tried to build rapport. I joked a little bit, uh, joshed with them. Uh, I made sure that they were able to see, to hear, and to write because uh, the, the slums test requires those things. It isn't that you can't use the slums test if somebody were blind and could not do the clock drawing test or the visual spatial test, but you'd have to score it on the basis of uh, a total number of points that was absent those two items. And there is no standardization for that. Uh, but we can, can make some presumptions, and, and it doesn't mean the test is useless. Um, where, uh, where people seem to want to give up, particularly on the animal naming test, I would burn a little bit of their time, which kind of destroys the, the utility of the test a bit, but I did it quickly, and I would encourage them and give them some motivations uh, and some feedback. You're doing a good job to try to get them uh, to move ahead. If you want to get cute, you can kind of think about how many seconds did it take you to do that, and you can give them a little bit more time afterwards. That's uh, uh, not uh, entirely improper. But if there's uh, enough a, a motivational state there, then probably you don't want to do that because that in itself is a clinical finding that feeds into the test. The question has been asked me uh, of whether it is uh, proper to give the interviewee some feedback in regard to was the last response correct or not. Uh, and um, uh, to give that feedback could um, change the, the outcome of the test, and in fact it probably could. I have felt comfortable in doing that as long as I do it for all patients so that the standardization of the score is um, going to be there. The um, uh, patient who uh, scored MCI, uh, I'm sorry, scored at the bottom end of normal, 
uh, actually, if I had given his clock drawing test uh, w one less point, he would have fallen into the MCI. And you'll see that from time to time. You'll be in a gray zone. So you can't get crazy about these categories. The fact that he was sort of hovering between the bottom end of normal and the top end of, of minimum cognitive impairment told me that I still had a problem, potential problem for this guy, and that he needed to be retested in six months. So um, uh, we don't have to think of these as being so critical or so uh, finite as that I would rather have them viewed in a, in a more um, uh, artistic way, so to speak, uh, with, a, with a little bit of, put a little bit of judgment into this. You'll notice that on each of the cases where the, the individuals um, did not remember spontaneously one of the five objects, that I gave them cues. I mentioned, as I did that, that that's not part of the test. And so when they respond and get an answer after cueing, you don't give them that answer. You don't give them partial credit, like your high school English teacher did. They've, they've failed uh, to, to remember that spontaneously. But on the side, you remember, whoa, when I gave this guy cues, he got them all. Or when I gave him cues, he didn't get them all. Those people who are able to uh, to remember after cueing, it may be a clue for the examiner that the etiology of the memory problem is from vascular uh, disease, something like multiple small stroke syndrome, uh, sentinel infarct syndrome, and so forth. If we turn to the geriatric depression scale, this is a yes-no uh, scale. And there is a much longer version of this with, uh, gee whiz, 30 questions or something. But there's no difference in the validity, the utility of the short form and the long form. So it's certainly worthwhile to use the short form. You don't gain anything by spending more time or, or wasting the patient's time, either one. Uh, if a person has a score of five or above, this indicates probable depression. Below five, probably not depressed. Now again, you need to use a little judgment, and if there are extenuating circumstances, things about the history that you know, and they scored a four, you might uh, still want to um, make the hypothesis that depression existed. Similarly, if you use this um, test to follow up your treatment of depression, and the person used to score eight, and then after treatment they score four, that's sure better, but it isn't totally better, and you might consider this person to be a brick or two short of a full load of treatment, and you might want to increase your dose. Whereas if that person came back and scored a one or a two, you might be satisfied and not increase the dosage. I've been given a very good question here. Uh, how do we use these tests clinically uh, in working with families, and how do we uh, sort of uh, uh, stand back and get the 10,000-foot view of this. Uh, many families are oblivious to their loved one's um, uh, problems, and many are in denial. Uh, oftentimes, the spouse is also elderly, may have their own cognitive or depression problems, and therefore be in denial. First thing I'd like to say is that uh, the, the visual spatial things, like the clock drawing test, are uh, surprising and not arguable. And so a person that uh, has good social skills and have, can have a normal breakfast conversation uh, with, with their family so the family is unaware of what kind of cognitive impairment they have, and you run through this, and you, you show them particularly the, the uh, clock drawing test, they all of a sudden are, it's an awakening to how much cognitive impairment there is. This is true even for the clinician. You can uh, be very, very surprised at somebody that you've had a medical interview with, and you think they're pretty, pretty much all together, 
and then you do this, and the clock drawing test is a disaster. Uh, so the objectivity of that test can be very good. The, uh, the same thing is, is somewhat, perhaps less dramatically true of the entire test. Uh, a person can have a very normal conversation with you, and then when you ask the questions what day of the week it is, it's Friday when it's actually Monday, uh, what year is it, it's 2006, no, it's 2011, and so forth and so on, uh, there, you really can't argue with the cognitive deficit. When it's the actual life events that are being picked up on, somebody forgot a pot on the stove, somebody did, lost the car keys, you can always come up in a, with an excuse. And sometimes the excuse is just that, it's an excuse. Sometimes, like Freud said, sometimes a cigar is a cigar. And sometimes you really did forget the pot on the stove because you got distracted and there's nothing wrong with your brain. Uh, but the testing has a different objective kind of a meaning, and you can't escape the findings of it with uh, excuses in most, in, in most cases. I suppose you could say, well, I didn't sleep last night or something like that, or I drank too much before I took this test. Uh, but otherwise, you're not going to be able to escape the objective reality of, of the testing. Uh, doing this can bring a family uh, back to reality so that they can make better choices for their loved one, including uh, things like whether you would go ahead with an extensive operation. Would you do a coronary artery bypass in an individual that scored eight? on a St. Louis University medical sta mental status examination, you might think twice about that. The lifespan and the quality of life are just not going to be there to make that kind of expense and danger worth doing. Uh, placement in assisted living in a nursing home, or if the family does intend to have them home, and maybe you've got an adult protective services case, where the family is leaving them alone. They go off and go to work. Mom doesn't need anybody there. She's fine. The test doesn't say she's fine. It says somebody's got to be with her 24-7, or else the aluminum siding salesmen are going to get her for a whole bunch of money, or she's going to make a mistake and burn up the house, or whatever. Something bad is going to happen. Um, it's amazing what kind of denial people can get into uh, if the uh, pressures of e economics and, and family dynamics are what are driving the decision. Sometimes you need something like the cognitive testing to bring it on home. And um, maybe even uh, if they still are in denial, bring it on home to a judge. In practical uh, everyday life, many times I relegate the, the actual performance of these examinations to ancillary staff, uh, to the nursing staff, uh, or many, many times in my nursing homes, it'll be the social worker that gets to do this. Uh, now, that can create a, a, a bit of an issue when the social worker does the test, there are impairments there, and either the resident or the family wants feedback. And so what do you do? Uh, I think probably the best thing is to, to um, cop out on that and say, look, I'm not your doc. I really can't put this in the context of the medicines you're on and uh, your age and all of the other things that, that help to determine what this means. I think this will be better discussed with your physician, uh, and we think you'll have an opportunity to do that next Friday at 3 o'clock when he comes by, or whatever you can offer them to, in a way of a, of a time frame. Um, to, uh, to get sucked into it uh, prematurely could um, just put you on the hot seat uh, when it needs more clinical uh, massaging before. A good example of this would be somebody that performs poorly on the St. Louis University Mental Status Examination and also poorly on the Geriatric Depression Scale. Is that dementia or MCI? Or did the person's 
uh, cognitive performance suffer because of their depression. That's what we call pseudo-dementia. And that's one for the attending doc. The uh, new MDS 3.0 actually has a standardized test of cognition built into it. Uh, it is not as multidimensional as the St. Louis University Mental Status Exam or the Mini Mental Status Exam that you're familiar with, perhaps, uh, but it's useful. In either case, uh, I'd like to see these uh, examinations done more routinely. And so, as a nurse, as a social worker, uh, someone other than a physician doing these, um, first of all, I'd see you advocate for doing them more routinely in your, in your facility. That gives you another cop-out because you can say, we do these on everybody. We're not looking into some concern we have for you. Uh, alternatively, if there are concerns there, you may feel comfortable in uh, uh, saying there are some abnormalities here, so there's some things that indicate that there could be a problem, but I think that's, uh, this, this is going to need further explanation. Uh, it's going to need the attention of your physician uh, to carry this forward.